a year of drought, a year of smoke. A typical July day in 2023 found a gray sky without a cloud, the product of Canadian fires out of control. Occasionally a storm would pass through and bring a few days of blue sky, but the smoky haze returned into August. A few days after Yellowknife was evacuated, the haze returned to Wisconsin skies amid an August week with record temperatures predicted throughout the state. Then Earth blasted through the hottest September on record. Our native butterflies, insects that stay here during the winter as egg, caterpillar, chrysalis, or adult, had a good year where I survey in the northeast with silvery and Baltimore checker spots in greater numbers, as well as more green commas than previous years found in more areas. Their success, though, hinges upon their habitat, wetlands, of various types. An often overlooked satyr, the common ringlet, has been moving further south in the state each year. In August, evidence for a second brood for the species surfaced in Ocanto County where I found a lone ringlet flying well past its flight period. Of endangered species, there's mixed news. WisconsinButterflies.org had no reports of swamp metal marks likely result of the northern Kettle Moraine count being canceled. Regal fritillaries, though, had many reports, with the Swangles finding 41 at the Buena Vista grasslands on July 9th. This was not a notable year for southern immigrants. We had an early influx of red admirals in April, when a few storms blew warm air into the state. Also, plenty of monarchs made it north. But few of the sulfurs were seen, and only five American snouts were reported. Painted ladies had an average year, appearing as summer drew to a close. Perhaps variegated fritillaries had their best year in a decade, though, showing that it's difficult to make reliable generalizations. In 2022, the International Union for Conservation of Nature, the IUCN, identified the monarch butterfly as an endangered species. Though this listing did not force legal changes, it did prompt government agencies to begin planning policies that would go in place if the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service gave the butterfly endangered status. I had spoken with an official at Wisconsin's Department of Transportation who told me that the state was preparing new policies that would restrict the mowing of roadsides during key periods in late summer. Such policies, which would be beneficial to far more species than monarchs, were also being looked at in Illinois and other states. Well, surprise! On October 3rd, 2023, the publication Science announced that the IUCN had moved the monarch to vulnerable to extinction status, a less serious concern than endangered, but still maintaining that the monarch butterfly could go extinct. It's too early to determine how this listing will change federal and state policies toward the monarch. 2023 did prove a great year for one Western or Northwestern immigrant, the rare Western white, Pancha occidentalis, first reported by Jeffrey Russell on August 1st at Big Bay State Park, where he saw two. Ryan Brady saw eight at his house in Bayfield County on August 13th. He has two previous reports of the species in 2011 and 2012. Mike Reese and David Bratley counted four at the Memorial Park in Washburn on August 14th. Terry Mortier, August 15th, reported 15 in and around Washburn. That same day, Mike Reese and Robbie Johnson found two at Superior Point in Douglas County. Later in August, on the 23rd, K. Java found a single western white at Fish Lake State Wildlife Area. Two days later, Bonnie Lund found three at Bayfield Marina. Daniel Jackson found it in Price County on August 27th. And Ann and Scott Swingle reported the immigrant four separate times. So we now have records from five northwest counties, Burnett, Douglas, Bayfield, Ashland, and Price. Marine blues invading Wisconsin in 2022 could have laid thousands of eggs, 
but the chances of a butterfly acclimated to Arizona surviving Wisconsin's extended cold months proves vanishingly small. The western white, on the other hand, might have laid eggs that will survive to establish a foothold in the counties adjacent to Lake Superior. It's found at higher altitudes in the states and Canada, suggesting that it can handle colder conditions than even Wisconsin offers. And its caterpillar food plant, many brassicas, primarily mustards, are common here. On September 18th, Mike Reese confirmed a second generation of western whites in Washburn. We'll have to wait until well into 2024 to find out if our guests intend to become residents. For now, though, popular opinion finds the western white to be our butterfly of the year in the Badger State. I cobbled together some statistics on reporting at wisconsinbutterflies.org. In the first week of July, likely the busiest time of the year, reports were submitted from 38 of Wisconsin's 72 counties. In July, 54 counties were heard from. By the end of July, only seven counties did not have a butterfly report submitted for the season. As you can see from this slide, none of these counties rank in the top 50% for population. From this slide, you can see that the list includes some of our smallest counties in land area, with Pepin being the smallest county. Clark County is both largest in population and size of these seven. In 2023, we relied on people covering different parts of the state. Steve Kenyon, Fort McCoy, the Driftless, and Monroe County. Donna Williams Richter in the far southwest with focus on Grant County, reporting more than 500 hackberry emperors in one day. Mary Roan in her garden in River Falls. Rory Williams in Winnebago County. Jacob Collison with the amazing Rainbow Airfield in Franklin. Ethan Brown and Jeremy Meyer canvassing the greater Milwaukee area. In the Northwest, we had Terry Mortier patrolling Dunn County and surroundings, Dean Hansen checking out the Namakagan bogs, Devin Corbin watching Washburn County, and Joan Rickert still keeping an eye out in quiet Taylor County. A question I'm sometimes asked, was this year a good year for butterflies? usually draws a much longer response from me than the questioner desired. For some species, it was a great year as far as numbers and reproductive success go. For others, we can hope to see them next year as they didn't show up this year. But what's important to note is that we cover a small part of the state in small increments of time. If I hadn't decided to visit the Jones Springs area in Okano County on a specific date, I probably wouldn't have found a huge number of silvery checker spots. And who knows, on that particular day, I might have missed any number of amazing butterfly phenomena in the county or region. I think we need to find more people to patrol the state for butterflies. I think that we need to find young people who can carry on the great work of people like the Leglers, who have established our butterfly counts, but who are finding less energy to stomp around counting bugs. Butterflying like birding is available to everybody that wants to do it. It's our responsibility to help people develop their lepidopteran interests by providing the information they need to be successful. In that respect, I think that 2023 was a building year for Wisconsin's butterflying community, which would make it a very good year.